Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle. Uh, today I'm going to be installing the My Energy Eddy device. It's a micro generation power diverter, energy diverter. And uh, basically, in principle, what we're talking about is when you have installed solar panels, the most important thing to do with your solar panels is consume the energy that you generate. Even if you're going to be paid um, a tariff, an incentive by either your energy company or the government or whoever, if you're going to be paid something for what you generate, it's not going to be worth as much to you as if you consume that energy. So consuming the energy that you generate from either your wind turbine or your solar panels, that's key. It's key to the installation of solar panels for me. So if I go back to all the way into the beginning, September last year, I bought an electric car. I bought the Kona Electric. I bought it knowing that I wanted to go solar. And I bought the solar panels knowing that I was going to have an electric car. The two go in tandem because I'd realized that I was consuming energy in all sorts of different ways. I was consuming it in the house in form of electricity, uh, diesel in the car for energy to get me around in the car, and then oil to heat my house and to heat my hot water. And that sort of didn't make sense to me because I wanted to be more efficient. I wanted to save money. <laughs> and yes, we have some works going on. So I apologize for any drilling noises. There are some works going on and I'll cover that in another video. Also, I apologize. I've got a bit of a cold, a summer cold. Uh, our daughter's gone back to school and yet yeah, she's left a little bit of a cold with me. So thank you. <clears throat> But we'll, uh, we'll carry on anyway. I need to get this video out. There's several that I'm hoping to release. And if I don't crack on, I won't get them out in time. So today, installing the Eddy device. And it's part of the long-term um, plan of consuming less energy of other kinds. So heating my hot water through electricity will save me using oil from the oil boiler. So that's part of the plan. But cost-wise, it doesn't make sense to consume electricity from the grid to do so. So efficiency-wise, it makes sense to consume it from solar. So that was part of my plan, not just to charge my car and to power the house, but to heat my hot water from solar energy. Why didn't I install a solar diverter right at the start? And I could have done. Um, the reason for that was I didn't know what to go for. I really didn't know whether the My Energy Eddy, which was the obvious choice for me because I had the My Energy Zappy charger, I didn't know whether it was worth the £400 to buy it and get it installed. I had this nagging doubt that what I could do was manually flip the switch on the immersion heater and I could save most of the cost savings that I wanted to. I could still heat it with electricity and not use oil. I could make some cost savings, use lots of solar energy. So the plan would be if there's one kilowatt of solar going through at the time that I turn the immersion on, I've got one kilowatt of solar, a three kilowatt immersion heater, so that's two kilowatts are coming from the grid. If I had solar energy at the time of two kilowatts, I'd only be consuming one kilowatt from the grid. And if it was a bright sunny day, all I would need to do is wait until it was three kilowatts of electricity from the solar panels, and then I'd have the hot water heated for free. So I wanted to see what proportion of saving I could make without having to install a solar diverter and whether that would work for me. I mean, how lazy can I be not flicking a switch once a day or installing a timer and have it timed? My thought was the peak time in the day, about 11.30 to 12, I could set the immersion on for an hour, an hour and a half around that time every single day. And all I'd need to know is I'd need to set the car in the mode charging on the zappy so that when the hot water came on, the car charger would cut out and it'd be all automatic, no hassle whatsoever. The only downside would be really uh, dark, dull days where the sun occurs in the morning or late in the afternoon and there's me heating the hot water in the middle of the day at the worst point of time if I was using an automatic timer. So that was my sort of plan. So I delayed because I had this nagging feeling. Was it worth it to buy uh, an automatic diverting device to save you the effort of switching the switch on and off? Because... It's not just saving the energy. It's not just using the energy from the solar panels. I can use the energy from the solar panels just doing it manually. And that's what I've been doing from around January, February time. And uh, yeah, I'm fed up with doing it manually. And I did get a timer and I was gonna install that. And it would just nag me too much that I wasn't able to do it in such an optimal way. And there's no way I was gonna go out and turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off during the day. That's just ridiculous. And that's where the My Energy device or the iBoost device or a Solic 200, those are the three that I was considering. 
they will all handle it for you, and they will all automatically divert that excess of solar energy into your hot water. One of the other nagging concerns that I had was, if it's a three kilowatt immersion heater, would it heat up to the right temperature if I was only gaining 300, 400 watts of electricity during the day? So would putting the small amount of energy into a three kilowatt immersion element in my hot water tank, would that actually do the job of heating the hot water or would it just maintain the temperature? So I wanted to gain some experience from other people. So I've been asking for these uh, last six, seven, eight months, all sorts of people that have got the My Energy Eddy device installed and other solar diverters, how they've got on, how they've worked, and whether it really does work like for like. Is 10 hours at 300 watts as effective at heating your hot water as one hour at three kilowatts? And that was my thought. Would it be worth waiting until I get a storage battery, storing up all the little bits of 300 watt energy until I've got the three kilowatts in a three kilowatt hour chunk, and then use that to heat the hot water from the immersion. Would that be more efficient? It was those sort of questions, which I know sort of sort of make sense, but also sort of don't make sense. They weren't straight in my mind, and I didn't want to make the decision until it was straight in my mind. So yes, um, doing it manually, changing the immersion heater and turning it on manually has saved around this year so far about 200 pounds in oil. I have noticed that my oil consumption is massively down. And I think that's around 200 pounds worth of oil that has been saved. So a large proportion of what I am saving, which is the oil, because I haven't been using it very much, if at all, I've saved that by using the immersion manually. So that's not a saving I can attribute to buying the My Energy Eddy device. The My Energy Eddy is saving me from using grid energy in my inefficient moments where I haven't got enough solar energy to heat the hot water. And that works out to be around, uh, I think around 80 to 85, maybe 90, 95, in, in that ballpark, sub 100 pounds for electricity cost for a year to heat my hot water just from solar energy and then topped up from the grid as and when necessary. Buying a My Energy Eddy is sub 100 pounds a year. So it's going to take me five years to pay back the money for buying a My Energy any device. And that was part of my thought process. If I bought the Solok 200, which was just a um, just a very small, neat bit of hardware with no, should we say, intelligence and no visual display and no capturing of um, savings data, all those sort of things. It was a very basic device. That was about £200. So half the price of the My Energy Eddy device. The iBoost, the iBoost came with some features and it came with the new version with two outputs as well. So that was similar to the My Energy Eddy device, which has two outputs. So not just your immersion heater, you could have a second device, a second storage heater or a second hot water tank that you could power from that. That was covered by this iBoost device. So why did I choose the My Energy Eddy device rather than the iBoost, which was about £280, it's a good £100 cheaper than the uh, Eddy device. And the simple reason is because the Zappi, an app that I now have for my energy to control and visualize my energy consumption, covers everything. It covers a battery if I get one, it covers my solar panel, it covers my house usage, it covers my car charging, and if I get the Eddy device, which I have, then it covers my hot water heating also. So it's all in one place. And I like that. So the main benefit of getting the Eddy device is its robustness, I suppose, um, its interface and the options you have for boosting and timers and the displays for how much energy you've saved. All of those things are the benefits. But the main one for me is the controllability and the visualization of the savings and the energy I've used all online on the app. And that goes back to the very first time that I met um, the people at My Energy when I was considering buying a Zappi charger for the car. They absolutely sold me on what they were doing for the future. Now, you know, I will confess that time from buying it in September last year through to now, it has been a bumpy road at times. The software hasn't worked as we'd hoped. There have been delays with updates, delays with the hub coming out. The app hasn't been ideal, but it has got better and it 
is gradually getting better and I see this as a long-term solution. So part of my decision on buying the Eddy device is that I remain confident that my energy are in control of the software and they will get there with the ultimate solution that I am envisaging, which is an app that just works and has a fast response time. And every time you have a new software release, you don't get faults. It just makes sense to have the Zappi and the Eddy and my house consumption all uh, available in one place. So that's the main reason why I've gone for it for £100 extra on buying the Eddy device. I've got the capability of app control, future releases, software upgrades. Then you've also got warranty and support. Well, I've been very happy with my energy so far. Yes, they're a small company growing very quickly, so at times they are stretched with resources. So I don't mind that sometimes it's difficult to get hold of them. Sometimes it's a little bit of time to get a fault registered with them, those sort of things. I don't mind that. It's how they actually resolve it when they get to you. And that is just exemplary. They just genuinely want to help, want to fix your problems. So that's the reasoning. That's why I've delayed. That's why I've now chosen the Eddy device. And uh, I'm looking forward to not having to turn that immersion switch on and off. I'm looking forward to it being done automatically. It will actually change my use of the solar energy I'm generating. Because first thing in the morning when I've got five, 600 watts free of solar energy, I can flick the car on, charge, and it can charge at those low rates just to consume every ounce of solar energy that I'm producing. Well, I won't have to do that to consume the energy anymore because the eddy will automatically do it. It'll automatically pick up those small bits in the start of the day and the end of the day, leaving me the middle of the day to power the car, to charge the car using the best part of the solar. I know it's probably more uh, for one of my solar update videos, but I think on average I'm um, consuming around 70% of the energy that I'm generating from my solar panels. So putting the Eddy device in is going to help me raise that percentage even higher to 80, 90, maybe even some days 100%. Uh, I should be able to use a lot more of the energy I'm generating. Okay, let's have a look and see what actually comes in the box and see what the Eddy looks like before it gets installed. Okay, here we have it. This is the Eddy in the box that it was uh, delivered in. I have taken all the instructions out. There's quite a few uh, marketing brochures and a reasonable size manual for the Eddy. So that's all good. But other than that, there's a, a CT cable packaged separately. So you get one of those with the Eddy. And uh, also the little bag that I'm dropping there, that's the aerial that goes on the top of the Eddy that helps communicate between the Eddy and the Zappi. So all good. It's quite a chunky little device though. Um, you know, it's not this small little thing that these eye boosts seem to be. Uh, all made of metal. Uh, vents top and bottom very solidly made uh, it definitely feels like it's gonna last there's a fixing plate on the back for fixing to the wall all the power sockets are easily accessible and uh, yeah I just want to weigh the thing because it is quite heavy just over 3.8 kilograms uh, so not a small item no wonder it needs to be fixed to the wall you're not gonna put that on with velcro that's for certain and there we have it job done if you're thinking of getting a solar diverter for your solar PV and you're not sure which one to get, then uh, I can of course recommend the MyEnergy Eddy device. It is the most expensive, but it's the most feature rich. It looks the most robust. It's nice and solid. Perhaps you get what you pay for. I don't know. That was my choice and my decision. Obviously your own circumstances and your own reasoning and how much money that is and what that means to you. It's all different for every individual person. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for sharing and subscribing. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I will update you later how it goes and more videos to come on solar as well as my Kona Electric. I'm conscious I haven't done as many on the Kona Electric of late, but I'm just enjoying driving it. So when we do some more interesting trips, I'll post some videos about that too. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon. Bye-bye. And there we have it. It's actually working. It is heating from diverted solar energy. So that's great news. It seems to kick in from about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, from a very low number. And uh, hopefully it's doing a good job.
Last comment is uh, don't forget to upgrade your software. I left it on the original software that came with the Eddy, and of course that wasn't quite compatible with the Hub and the Zappy, and I had some, let's say, inconsistencies that uh, didn't quite make sense to start with, but looking much better now.